six. I have said, ye are gods. Who is God talking to, brother? Us. They own it. Young man, who is God talking to when he called them gods? They talking to us. Why are we not in our God-like form? Why are we not ruling? Because to be a God, shouldn't that be... Shouldn't that be individuals ruling over you? God called me a God while I'm not ruling. Right. It's, it's finna tell you. It's finna tell you. Come on. Us men gotta stand up. I ain't worried about these women, these sisters. You men stand up. They gonna follow. That's right. Right. They gonna follow. That's right. That's right. Read. And all of you are children of the Most High. Come on. But ye shall die like men. God said, I made you a God. I made you to have eternal life. Boy, I'm going to punish you, and you're going to die like the rest of the man, like the rest of the nations. Right. Come on, we need y'all to subscribe to help us push. We got a lot of work to do in North Carolina. The Carolinas need this work. Right. You know what I'm saying? North Carolina need this work. So we need y'all to go and subscribe right now. Grab your finger, this one right here in particular. Right. Swipe the YouTube that you're probably already watching. Click the YouTube app. Right. Go to IUIC Riley page. Right up under there, it says subscribe. Click that button one time. Click that check. Subscribe to IUIC Riley. Elizabeth, you said? Desiree. Desiree, what's your name, bro? Give me Mark 115. You said what now? Everybody, look, listen to the tone of our voice. Is this going gonna to always be like this? Are our people gonna always be in the bottom? Are we gonna always be in the slums? Are we always gonna lead in HIV? What the hell we gotta do to get up out of this mess? What do we got to do? The brothers are giving you the answers, and we gonna give you the gospel. It's the gospel for all nations on earth. Right. Another slave for gospel is good news. Who needs the good news? Who needs the gospel? Read that, Mark 1 and 15. Mark. Chapter 1, verse 15. Come on. And saying, the time is fulfilled. The time is what? The time is fulfilled. The time is fulfilled. Prophecies has come. You are living in prophecies. Come on. And the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of whom? And the kingdom of God. The kingdom of whom? And the kingdom of God Come on. is at hand. Is at what? Is at hand. Who's going to be running God's kingdom? Right. You are. Who's going to be running God's kingdom? It's a nation of people going to be running God's kingdom. His kingdom is at hand, meaning it's near. It's near to us. Who's going to be in that kingdom? Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Who's going to be running God's kingdom? I'm going to speak plain. Is it going to be the white man? Is it going to be the Chinese man? Is it going to be the Arabian man? Who is it? Read Deuteronomy. Chapter 7 and verse 6. Come on. For thou art an holy people. God said the Israelites are holy people. Right. You are the holy people. You want to know why? Look, you want to know why he switched it and made it backwards? Because you are his chosen. Right. He punished you like his children. This is just temporary. But we're losing. You're, you're failing the test. Right. You're failing it. Keep God's commandments. That's the only pure thing on this earth. Right. God's commandments. Right. Read. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Come on. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. God did what? Hath chosen thee. Them, them shoes, them crocs you got on your feet. It was many shoes in your closet, was it not? Which ones you chose? The ones on your feet. Yes. God made all nations on this doggone earth. Right. Which ones did he choose? Right. He chose the Israelites. Right. Start staring up your mind when the Bible is speaking to you. He wants you to use your brain and picture this. On the day he was created, spirits, he made all nations. As he was making you, he put you on top of everybody. Right. Do you understand that? Right. So you're supposed to be what, brother? If he puts you on top of everybody, what you supposed to be doing? If you're above everybody, what you supposed to be doing? You're supposed to be a leader. That's right. Stop trying to be a follower. These folks live like white people. Some of your own boys, they live like a white man. I'm going to tell who made who made up Christmas? Halloween. 
Thanksgiving. No. They celebrate that though. So what I'm saying is true. They live like a white man, so-called white man. The Bible calls them the nation of Edom. You an Israelite. Stop being a follower. Be a leader. Read. The Lord thy God have chosen thee to be a special people. He chose us to be what? A special people. What makes us special, y'all? What makes us special than all the other nations? No, we know we the fastest. Teach we know we the smartest. Teach what makes us special? Teach Skip down to the part where he says he loved us. He didn't choose us because we, you got me, come on. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 7. Watch this, come on. The Lord, thy, the Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. God said, I didn't choose you because you are more in number. God does things on purpose. He want everybody to establish him as what? The God Almighty. He don't want to make you too many or too plenty where it can be visual that that's the only how we want. No, God don't roll like that. Watch this, read. For you were the fewest of all people. We was the what? The fewest of all people. Come on. But. Because the Lord loved you. He, because what? Because the Lord loved you. God don't love all nations. Right. He's punishing you because he loved you. The rest of the nations eventually, eventually going to go extinct. Right. Oh, you don't believe that, do you? They eventually going to go extinct and appear going to rule this earth. That's why other nations don't like you. That's why the so-called white man put you in slavery That's and didn't right. have no mercy on you. Right. Because he knew that. That's right. That's right. You got to stand up and be a leader, young man. How old are you? Right. 18, it's time. Finish Deuteronomy 7 and 6 out. And then I'm going to paint the picture of the kingdom. Are y'all ready for that? Nobody has never painted the picture of the kingdom of God for you. Your lying pastors ain't done a doggone thing in the church. Right. But take your money. Stop going there. Read. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. To be a special people unto himself. Oh, come on. Above all people that are on the face of the earth. Your pastor ain't never read that in a church. Right. God is what? He's telling you that he's not into equality. Right. He put a nation above all people on this earth and all praise to the most high God. Ah, it is us. Right. Right. We are those chosen people. Right. That's why he punishing us and put us in the slums, in the ghettos, in slavery. Because the things that we do still unto this day, we lie to each other. We steal from each other. Right. We what? Kidnap our sisters. We fornicate with our sisters. These are the things that's keeping you in hell. Now I'm going to paint the picture of the kingdom of heaven. Give me that in Psalms 80, 82 or 83 about um, uh, gods. We are gods. Yes, sir. 82 and 6. Yes, Pay attention. What, what does the word God mean? Young man, what does the word God mean? The word itself. What does it mean? 1 Corinthians 11 and 3. I want y'all to pay attention. The word God. I'm going to give you the biblical definition of the word God. Come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Who is our God? God means power. The head of every man is Christ. Who is our God? Christ. Good job, young man. Who is our God? My brother? Christ. God just means power. Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. Who is the woman God on this earth? You on, young man. Read it again. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Who is the woman God on earth? Read it again, young man. I want you to get this. Who is man God? Who is over man? Christ. Who is over woman? So who is that God? There you go. But you don't believe that because you never been taught that. I'm going to show you that God called us gods. He called you a God. He just took your dog on power because you don't listen to nothing he say. You don't do nothing he say. So he took your power from you. Right. That's why our sisters disrespect us. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Answer this, my sister. If you truly love a man, and that man tell you to go put on a dress, and you truly want to satisfy him and love him, what you going to do? She, you see that? Say it in the mic, sis. Come and say it in the mic for me. I asked the sister if she truly loved that man, and she sure she wants him, she desires him, she would, you would do what if he told you to put on a dress? put on a dress. She gonna put on a dress. Yes. Yes. So who, now who does the ball go back to in the court? 
to the man. The man is walking around here saying, hey sis, I like that blonde in your hair. I like, I like when you got them pants on. I like when you got them shorts on. Y'all don't follow me in like that. If a man come up to you and say he like what you got on, your pants, how he can see your thigh. Listen to me. Stay with me. Don't get discouraged. I'm your brother. Because that those things are only for your husband to see. That's right. Don't y'all know that? That's only for your husband to see. So I'm going to get back to the gods. Read this. Psalms chapter 82 and verse 6. Hello. I have said, ye are gods. Who is God talking to, brother? Us. Stay on it. Your man. Who is God talking to when he called them gods? They talking to us. Why are we not in our God-like form? Why are we not ruling? Because to be a God, shouldn't that be, shouldn't that be individuals ruling over you? God called me a God, why I'm not ruling? It's going it's to tell you. It's going to tell you. Come on. Us men got to stand up. I ain't worried about these women, these sisters. You men stand up. They going to follow. That's right. They going to follow. That's right. That's right. Read. And all of you are children of the Most High. Come on. But ye shall die like men. God said, I made you a God. I made you to have eternal life. But I'm going to punish you and you're going to die like the rest of the man, like the rest of the nations. Right. You know, you're going to suffer and die like them. Why? Come on. And fall like one of the princes. Come on. Arise, oh God. Now give me that the world upside down, Psalms 82. Yes, I'm going to show you why. You know why this world is upside down? Talk to me, young man. Why is this world upside down? I'm going to show you. Y'all stay with me. Come on. Psalms 82, verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. God said the Israelites walk on in darkness. It's a scripture in Proverbs 6 and 23. The light is God's laws. That's the light. We walk in darkness because we don't keep God's laws. You have no light. The light is God's laws, according to Proverbs 6 and 23. God said the Israelites walk in darkness because you don't keep no laws. Read right. it again. They know not, neither will they understand. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. God said the whole earth is out of course. Remember, he's talking to the Israelites and said they walk in darkness. He just said the earth is out of course. It's upside down. Y'all with me? Why is it upside down? Come on. I have said, ye are gods. So, if God said the Israelites walk in darkness, and he said that the earth is upside down out of course, how do we put it back on course? Huh? Make it plain. What, I can't hear you over there. Being God. gods, how? The reason why the earth is upside down, because we upside down. You are the leaders. God made you to lead the earth. That's it was right. a gift. You took the gift and stopped on it. Right. Now the earth is out of course. Now we live, the gods live in the slums and ghettos. Jeez. Still Let being sold in slavery. Right. We That's still right. being slow in slavery today. So what are the gods got to do? Now I'm finna go further and paint a picture of this kingdom of heaven. Give me that in Revelation chapter um, 2. Revelation chapter 2. So the gods are going to rule again. Let me show you that in Deuteronomy 28 and 1. No, no, stay in Revelation. That's the saying the same thing. So what's the reward for keeping the commandments, sister? The reward. Eternal life. I like that. You're a good listener. What is eternal life? I like the sister spirit. Give me that in Revelation 21, the spirit moving. Give me that in Revelation 22 about um, the life, eternal life. Revelation 22 and 8 or something like that. I'm going to show you what the life is. Stay with me, bro. The sister answered it. I asked her, what's the reward for keeping God's commandments? She said, eternal life. We never ate. Hey, we never had that picture painted for us. I'm going to show you what that means. It stages the eternal life. That's Remember right. the prayer we used to say? Our daddy and mama taught us our what? Our father, which art in heaven. Thou be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Where does it come, sis? Finish the prayer out. That will be done on earth as it is in heaven. There you go. It's a pro that, that prayer is a prophecy that the kingdom of heaven is going to come on earth. There's going to be some rulers ruling this earth. The next what? The next rulership is going to be your rulership. Right. It's going to be your rulership. Right. But you got to keep the commandments. That's right. You got to go in your house and flip, it and flip that Bible over. Get on YouTube you have to and start learning which commandments you need to keep. You got to start keeping God's commandments.
Read. Revelation chapter 22, verse 14. Come on. Yeah. Blessed are they that do his commandments. What does that mean? Blessed are they that what? That do his commandments. Now let's hear the reward. Come on. That they may have right to the tree of life. That they may have right to the what? That they may have right to the tree of life. Now watch what the tree of life going to be. Come on. And may enter in through the gate. Through the what? Through the gate. What's the tree of life? That they may enter in through the gates into the city. The eternal life is the 12 gates. The That's nation right. of Israel, I'm going to show you that in Revelation 21. The eternal life is the gates. Life. Gates. Life. Gates. That's right. That's your reward. That's the right. kingdom of heaven. Rulership. That's right. Bring it out. You want to know why crosses is bad against God. Why crosses is bad? Talking about the cross? Okay, yeah. we're going to get there. I did the scripture, sir. I got you. Give me that revelation. We're going to get the gates, the reward right quick. Come on. Revelation 21, verse 12. Bring it out. And had a wall, great and high. And had 12 gates. 12 what? 12 gates. I told you that life in that gates. When Christ told you to keep the commandments in Matthew 19, your reward that we be eternal life. He's talking about the kingdom of heaven. And That's also right. the eternal life after that, too. He's talking about that as well. He's talking about both. He's talking about the next kingdom that's coming and also after that. You right. gotta understand. Come on, read. And at the gates, 12 angels and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. The children of Israel is going to rule in the next kingdom. You ain't going to never have to work a day in your life again. That's no right. more work. You ain't do nothing but rule everything. That's going to be your job to rule. Do absolutely nothing. They're going to come and borrow from you instead of you have to borrow from them. That's right. God going to put it back in his natural sp uh, place. That's like right. King David, right. King Solomon. Right. Those are your forefathers. They right. rule. All right. Do y'all understand? That was the gospel. Give me that in Exodus about the grave and arm um, images, about the cross. That's a good question. So what's your name, sir? Mars Mohead. Mr. Mars Mo Mohead? Yeah, Mohead, yeah. Mohead, I'm Joel. Nice to meet you. What's that? Uh, no, just give me that in uh, Exodus 20 about um pertaining um, to the images. I got you. We're going to speak, because we know it's, a, uh, it's an image, right? We can agree on that. It is an image. This is an image. This is an image. That's an image. All this is images, right? What does the cross represent? Bring it up. I'm asking you, sir. What does it represent? But it's against other people's world. So, so you saying that cross? I was going to the first part. You said that cross represent Jesus. Now, who said that? Right, right. That's we 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 all came from. That. I'm with you, sir. I didn't know always, so I get what you're saying. But I'm, what I'm asking you is, who told us that that Christ represented Jesus? Like, who taught us? Who taught us? Um, G, who taught us Jesus? Okay, let me let me ask it like this, because I know you answering in a spiritual way, so I'm with you. Let me let me ask it plain. When we came off them slave ships, who taught us Jesus? You know, when my mama taught me, I never had a dinner. Who taught your mama? Her dad. Who taught your dad? Make it plain. The Bible, I guess. Sir, because you you know a lot more than us pertaining to history. Bring it out. Who taught us Jesus? He told us Jesus. He said Jesus looked like him. He said God looked like him. He said the angels looked like him. The cross comes from him. It's not biblical. He made. Yes, sir. Go ahead. I got a definition for you. Yes, sir. Let's read this definition. Now let's read the definition. To prove it. Okay, come on. What is the crucifixion? The crucifixion of the cross. Crucifixion is a method of capital punishment in which they, the condemned is tied or nailed to a large wooden cross, beam or stake, and left to hang until evening, I'm sorry, until eventual death. Now who, now who was this used for? Now I want to read the rest of it off. Now who, who used this doctrine? What did they use it for? It's going to say it. Come on. It was used as a punishment by the Persians. By the who? By the Persians. The Persians, they used it. Come on. Carthaginians. Uh huh. And Romans. And who? And Romans. And who? And Romans. Who are the Romans, sir? You, you, are you with me? I'm listening to you. Who used this method or, or spread this what? This practice. Bring it up. Because it's not biblical that the, that the cross represents Christ. Right. It doesn't represent anything but their doctrine. That's right. So it said it was used by who? By Romans, among others. You see that? Give it back. So I'm going to. 
Go ahead, I want you to And tell them also that was you over there. Right, right. Stay with me. Stay with me. My brother, my brother. Who was Christ? Who was who was Christ? Who was the disciples, the Israelites paying their taxes to? In the book of Rome, uh, uh, excuse me, in the New Testament. Say it again. I can't hear you. Gospel. The gospel? Okay. Christ and the disciples, the Israelites, was paying their taxes to the Romans. White people. Bring it up. Who hung Christ on the cross? White people. So why would they represent the eternal life of my Savior? How can that represent that? How can that graven image represent that when it represents them? Give me that in uh, Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to show you the prophecy that we will believe that. Now it's time to get to the Bible. Yeah, right. It's a lecture trail and they dose you up. So they, they change the death. So that what, what we're trying to say is that means absolutely nothing. That was a punishment. The, grave, the, the cross was just a punishment. It has no meaning biblically. You see what I'm saying? It comes from so-called Christianity. Who up. made Christianity? Bring it up. So-called white people. Yes, they made you. Baptist, right. Pentecostal. Right. They made all that. Yes. Catholic. Sign right here. Sign right here, sir. Oh man, come on. Look closer. Look closer. Now check this out. John Smith, Baptist. Right. 1608. I'm looking for one on with a cross. I know one on got a cross on. Joseph Smith. He made Mormon. 1830. Ellen G. White, Adventist, and Adventist, 1863. These are the religions your daddy and your mama grew up on. Bring it on. What? Straight slaves. That's right. That's right. A to Z, we were slaves. Hold on. Hold on. Let me let me get this one. Okay. What you got? So now look. Now look. I need y'all come close. Keep, come come a little closer so I can teach you. I don't want to be yelling. Now who's holding this cross right here? Get up. Who's holding that cross? Come a little closer, sir. Wrong people. Wrong me, yeah. You see that? Yeah. Those are the what? They will go around. They will go around and try to what? Indoctrinate us. Yeah. These are the same individuals that, are, that was indoctrinating the so-called Native American Indians, which are your brothers. Right. They are Israelites. They came to this land indoctrinating everybody, beating the, beating the hell out of our people, yeah. making them suffer. These are the same people that taught you. What does he have in his hand? A cross. Right. Right. That is not of God. That's their doctrine. That's of them. It represents them. I don't understand that. Put it down for me, officer. So these individuals, where was we? So now stay with me, y'all. Now look back at this one. Thank you, officer. Yes, sir. Now look back at this one. Y'all look. Now where was we when we was under these religions, sir? Where was we when we was under these religions? 1863, 1872, 1830, 16, 1608 especially. Yeah. Where was, what, what was our condition in America? What was our status in 1608? John Smith Baptist. He made the back. We were slaves. Right. Right. That's right. We were slaves. Slaves obey your master. Close the book. That's not even what that means. Right. That means that if your brother uh, was a master over you, meaning somebody you uh, work for, that you don't supposed to gain and say him. You don't supposed to talk back. Just like a regular job. He tell you to do something, you're supposed to do it. That ain't got nothing to do with no slavery. Right. But they took that and made it up like that. So if they lied about all these things, Christ is white, um, um, God is a, a who? The angels. The angels all these people look like them, they're going to lie about the other things. So let's get to the Bible. Come on. Yeah, read this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Bring it out. And the Lord shall scatter thee. God said he's going to do what? Shall scatter thee. Who are the only people on this earth been scattered, sir? Sir, you got to stay with me. Who are the only people on this earth has been scattered everywhere on this earth? The only people, who are the only people on this earth that have been scattered everywhere around the world? Do you see the Chinese man around the everywhere around the world? No. Who are the only people that everywhere you go, you're going to see them? Who? There you go, you're with me now. That's right. Now let's hear the prophecy that this is you. Come on. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. See, we don't know that Moses seen your future. Right. He's seen your future. He's seen God show Moses everything. This is the book of Deuteronomy. And right. he's going he, he to show you what else he's seen. He saw the religions that you'll be under, sir. He saw it. Come on. And there thou shalt serve other gods. God said, when I allow them to scatter you everywhere, 
Y'all stay with me. When I allow them to scatter you everywhere, you're going to serve other gods. If they painted themselves being God, if they painted themselves being God, is it safe to say that that is the uh, true prophecy that we will serve another God? How would you not say that when that's the doctrine your ancestors were taught? Right. Right. So that's this is the false god they were serving because your people was never taught to keep God's commandments. Right. Right. Let me let me. Did your mama teach you to wear fringes? You see what I'm saying? So that comes from the Bible. That's God's true doctrine. Right. They right. taught you to despise God's commandment. Come as you are. God loves all. He loves all nations. That's a lie. Right. That's right. 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 The laws of God done away with. T.D. Jakes teaching it. Crawford Dollar teaching it. Right. That's their doctrine. They're the devils. Right. They devils. Right. They teach against God. That's right. Read it again. And then thou shalt serve other gods. So you will serve other gods, and that's what that what happened to all of us. God put us on punishment, and we were walking around serving fake gods. Right. They don't even exist. They lie. Come on. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. God said the two main religions that our people will follow would be wood. You just seen who was carrying the wood on the picture. And what else? Stone. Give them the two. Now, you've been alive longer than most of us. What are the two main religions that your people rolled in? Bring it on. Uh-uh. It's safe to say that Baptist, Christianity, Pentecostal, them are all the same thing just about. So think outside of the, outside of the false biblical doctrines. You got what the wood will represent all those religions, Christianity, Baptist. Now, when it says stone, what religion? But the devil can blind me. Okay, we know that. We know that, sir. Stay with me. Stay with the teaching. I'm, finna, I'm trying to get you. Sir, sir, sir. I'm going to ask them. The cross represents the wood. That's the wood, all right? That's the main religions we are under. Which religion today that people say they are under when it comes to stone? What religion references stone? Stone. Bring it up. When you was growing up, what some of your homeboys, all your homeboys, they believe in um, Jesus? What they believed in? Muhammad! That's right! Islam. Islam! Right! That's what it's referencing. Y'all heard of that? Don't you got homeboys? You'll go up to them and be like, man, you know, it's like, nah, man, I'm a Muslim. Am I with? Am I right? Those are the two things your people went into. They went into those things. The book of Joel 3 describes and tells us that we went into slavery with them. And that's why our people learned that mess. So give me that in Habakkuk. Give me that in Habakkuk pertaining to the graven image. Sir, in order for you to get the answers, you have to acknowledge history. The, you're gonna think that that cross is real because you don't know your history in the Bible. Right. Our people gotta sit still and learn their history. If you don't know who you are, you don't know where you're going. That's right. Come on, read that. Habakkuk chapter two, verse eighteen. Bring it up. What profited the graven image? What profited the what? The graven image. What makes it graven? What profited the graven image? False, because it comes from what? Another nation. Right. Another doctrine. It's not of the Bible. Come on. That the maker thereof have graven it. The molten image. So who was the maker? Read that again. That the maker thereof have graven it. That's how we know it's a graven image. Because it has a maker who made the cross. Who made it? What nation of people made it, sir? Jeez. What nation of people made the cross? The black man made the cross? Bring it on. There you go. I, I was hoping you were going to come with me. Right. The, the, okay, so I want you to get it before you leave. I know you got to go. To prove that it is a graven image because it's not of your forefathers. Your forefathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's right. That's right. They, they taught to keep the laws. They ain't tell you one time to go put on the cross. Right. They represent your Savior's death. That's just like if somebody goes shoot Tyrone, I go put on a gun with Tyrone on it. Jeez. Walking around with Tyrone Let on the gun. That don't make no doggone sense. Right. Read it again. What profited the graven image? The maker thereof has graven it. The maker has graven it, come on. The molten image, a teacher of lies. A teacher of what? And a teacher of lies. Why would you want to walk around with a lie around your neck? Bring it out. Right, right. So if you're walking around with a lie on your neck, who are you bowing down to? Who are you worshiping? 
And who does the enemy worship if he teach against God? If he made the cross, give me that in Revelation 2. If the individual made the cross and he teaches lies, who does he worship on this earth? Isaiah 30 and 22. That person you want to Yeah, go get go, go, go also say go Isaiah. So y'all still listening? Stay put because this is a good topic about this graven image. Where Come on. Are? Bro, you ain't, that, that ain't it. That ain't it. Alright, that's on you. Come on. Isaiah, chapter 30, verse 22. Bring it up. Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven images of silver and the ornament of thy molten images of gold. Thou shalt cast them away. God said we should do what? Thou shalt cast them away. Y'all see what you're supposed to do with the graven images that are not of God? If they represent, because we all have images on us. That image of the Christ is a graven image. It represents lies. It right, represents right. another doctrine. Right, That's right. the difference. Right. That's the difference. You ain't going to throw your clothes away. It don't represent nothing. But that cross represents lies. It represents the crucifixion of your Savior. It represents what? Going against God's laws. Do y'all understand it? Are y'all with me? Who we got teaching next, y'all? What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's nation time.